Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On this beautiful Lord's Day, March the what's the date? Third. March third, twenty twenty-four. Amen. God has seen that we have make it another yes. day. Amen. Amen. Another day, another month. We have upon this earth to get it right with God. Amen. 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 So for our first Sunday service of Holy Communion today. Amen. And the title of the scripture or the sermon today is Faith is the line between patience and procrastination. Faith is the line be between patience and procrastination. Amen? You have heard it said many times that patience is a virtue. And when we look at that, we say, why, why is patience considered a virtue? And the answer is because it takes patience to activate faith. Without patience, you can't have faith. Amen? Sometimes you have to wait on some stuff. And so when we look at the definitions of the words, like I like to do, patience is described or defined as the ability to accept or tolerate delay or suffering without getting upset or giving up. Mm -hmm. The ability to accept it. The, the ability to wait on something that's taking a little longer than you thought. Amen? Amen? And waiting on that without getting upset or getting an attitude or just saying forget it. And what is the definition of procrastination? Because some of these can, the, the, the line between these two are very, very thin, amen? Procrastination is the act of unnecessarily postponing decisions or actions. Putting something off for tomorrow that you can do today, amen? The, the, the person who has patience would say, I'm going to wait on the Lord. No matter how long it takes, I'm going to wait it out and wait till I get a voice from the Lord. Amen? Amen? But the person who procrastinates will say, I'll seek the Lord tomorrow. I, I, I'm going to wait till I get this right. I'm going to wait till I get that right. Amen? I, I'm going to wait, you know, uh, 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 whenever this becomes that, or then I'll go and seek the Lord. Oh, you know what? I'm a little tired today. I didn't feel like it. I, let, let's just wait till tomorrow. I'll ask God for help or forgiveness tomorrow. Amen? Amen? That's what the procrastinator would say. But how many of us know that we're not guaranteed tomorrow? Amen. Don't put off today what you can do today. Amen. Don't put it off for tomorrow what you can complete right now. Amen? Amen. Amen? As they were walking in the desert. And one of the brothers said, what? What? Here's water. What was keep me from being baptized? You know, a lot of us will prepare for baptism and go and say, I'm going to wait till this Sunday or that Sunday when I can get mama and, and cousin and family to come see my baptism. Now, I can understand that maybe with a child, a brand new baby that you're getting baptized from the family. You want to get people there to, to see and witness and be a part of and say that, uh, 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 that, that, that command that everyone has that they will watch over that child and do their part to take care and, and, and grow them up in the faith. Amen? But when we come to grown folks or, or when you come to the age where you understand that you don't have a promise for tomorrow. And you decide that when God has put it on your heart to come down and be baptized, yeah. you need to do it today. Yeah. Don't wait till mama get there. Don't wait till brother and cousin and them come see you or, or when you can put it online for everyone to see because you might not make it yeah. Yeah. to that Sunday. Yeah. Don't procrastinate because there is a very, very thin line mm -hmm. between the two. And that line is called faith. So let's look at some of the scripture today. Because I want everyone out there to understand that spiritual procrastinations are stepping stones to the gates of hell. Spiritual procrastinations 
are stepping stones to the gates of hell. So let's see how some of the people in the Bible dealt with patience and, and, and procrastination. Amen? Look at verse 1, Hebrews chapter 11. And before we go, I, wanna, I want you to think about some of the things that have caused us to, to procrastinate on getting ourselves right. Amen? Some of the excuses that have been brought up now for people to come into the house of God. You know, when COVID came, COVID gave us a hell of an excuse not to come to the house of God. Yeah. Oh, that was the procrastinator's jewel in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I was going to go to church, but now they got COVID. And, and, and I don't want to go and sit around all these folk and, and be hollering and talking and, and catch COVID. Amen? COVID was a good excuse for the procrastinator. And then they say, well, you know, they, 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 now that there's COVID, I can just go online and watch the sermon online. I don't have to go to the church. And, and we are using uh, virtual worship as a substitute and not an alternative. Amen? Virtual worship should just be a, 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 a something you can do, not a substitute. Amen? You don't, you don't want to get comfortable where you just don't come to church anymore. You're just going to watch it online. Amen. Because so many things happen that you say, okay, I'm going to record it, and I'm going to wait till I cook this, I'm going to wait till I go do that, and I'll come back and sit down and watch the sermon later. That's procrastinating. Mm -hmm. Don't be a spiritual procrastinator. Because in order to have faith, in order to have salvation, sometimes you got to be patient. But don't let your patience be excused for procrastination. Amen? That's a very, very thin line. So let's look at what faith is. Verse uh, 1, Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. See, faith is that, that's, that's something that you believe in, but you've never seen it before, amen? You believe in Christ, but none of us have seen Christ with, by our own eyes. But we have heard about the good things and the good news, the good report that has come over the history of what Christ has done in the world. We have a spiritual connection and a spiritual feeling that we know there's something out there, but we just can't put our finger on it. But because we know and because we have seen the evidence of it in our lives, we have faith that Christ is real. Amen. Amen. See, that's the substance. It's, it's, it's the substance for things that you hope for, but the evidence of things you never saw. Right. Verse 3 says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So you don't know what made this world. You, you can see the things of the world, but you, you don't know what, what made it. You can't see God's hand in action. Yeah. But you know the evidence of it because you're looking at it. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you're looking at the beautiful sun that's up in the morning. You're looking at the beautiful moon that, right. that's above us at night. You're looking and listening to the beautiful birds that whistle and sing in our ears early in the morning. We see the beautiful majesty of the mountains and, and different scenery and those things around us. Amen. The loved ones that God has put in our care. Yes, we haven't seen the hands that have made it, but we have faith that it's made. Amen. Amen. Yes. By faith we understand that. For it says, by faith, faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Amen. And God testified of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaking. See, <clears throat> I want you to always understand that, yes, you have to have patience. And with the world today has become an automatic microwave world, that everything is here at the touch of your fingertips, right? You can just ask for it. Type it, and it's at your doorstep. Believe me, I know. My wife is on Amazon every day. You don't have to wait on sending somebody something in the mail. You can just go online, type what you want, it's at the door the next day. Sometimes it's the same day, amen? amen. Information.
information. I remember when I was younger, my dad used to make me go to the encyclopedia, read something, and tell him about what I've learned. Now the kids can just touch Google, and the information is right there at the tip of the fingerprints. And this is starting to uh, ruin the ability to be patient. Because when you get used to everything being right there, right on time, right when you want it, when it takes a little extra time, you start to think about giving up. You go on to the next thing. The, the attention deficit disorders are getting wider and wider and greater and greater because we don't have patience. And so a lot of people will misunderstand patience for procrastination. Because yes, with patience, you got to wait. But you don't just decide that you're not going to do it and you'll do it later. That's the difference. Amen? you got to be patient for faith. <clears throat> Bible says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. See, it's important to have faith and you got to have patience in order to achieve the faith. Six says, but without faith, what's, what's wrong? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe he is, that he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. Amen. See, that's where the patience come. Diligently seeking him. Don't mean I'm going to look for him and I don't see him, I'm gone. That's not the same. Diligently means year after year, day after day, item upon situation after situation. I'm looking for God in all of these situations. I'm looking for God in my health. I'm looking for God in the face of other people. I'm looking for his light to shine in those other Christians. I'm diligently seeking him in every situation there is. Where can I find God in this? And what can I find God in that? Diligently seeking is a term that means patience. It takes a time to diligently seek. Amen? You can't diligently seek in one day. It takes time. Look at seven. It says, by faith, Noah, being one of God of things not yet seen, moving with fear, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house, saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which was by faith. Do we think that Noah built an ark in one day? Noah had a word from the Lord said, Noah, it's going to rain. And Noah preached that it's going to rain for days and days and years and years. And no one listened to him. Amen? <clears throat> yeah, you have some procrastinators probably that say, well, you know, I'm not going to come into that now. I'm not going to give God my life. I'm going to wait till it rain. When it starts raining, then I'll come. But how many of us know that once the, the doors of the ark were shut, it was too late? Because when the doors of the ark were shut, it said people were knocking, trying to get in, but it was too late. Amen. Amen. He preached that it was going to rain, it was going to flood for years and years, and, and he, he built the, 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 the ark plank by plank, brick by brick, Amen. to get it to where it was supposed to be. That took time. Yeah. And if we're hard, in order for him to believe that it was going to, going to rain, it took faith. Yeah. It took faith that he had that he pro produced with his patience. He didn't say, well, Lord, if it start raining, or if I start seeing clouds, I'll start building then. I build an ark. I, you know, there's no water around here. It had never rained before. So what I know about what, what you're talking about, I'm, I'm going to wait till it start getting worse. I'm going to wait till it get dark or whatever it is, and then I'll start building. No, Noah listened to God and started building. And in the midst of his building, he still warned the people. He told them, it's going to rain. It's going to rain, and if you don't get in now, it's going to be too late. Amen. So by faith, he did not procrastinate, and he had patience, which allowed him to build day after day, year after year, gathering all the animals and all the things that God had told him to do with faith. Can you imagine how he thought when he said, bring two of every kind? Lord, how am I going to do that? How am I going to get two elephants and two 
giraffe and two uh, 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 insects, all the creatures of the world. How am I going to do all of that? But, but instead, he just said, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's all you have to do. The response needs to be, yes, Lord. What is it that you have me to do? Mm -hmm. Because those of us who have faith have the patience to see it through. Look at 8, it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go up onto a place which he should have, have <clears throat> he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and when he went out, not knowing whether he went. God told him to go out, and you're going to have this land for your inheritance. But Abraham didn't know where he was going. He didn't know. Okay, yes, Lord. He just decided to follow the voice of God. And he had faith that whatever God is taking him, it was going to be all right. Amen? Amen. That's what we have to have today. We, if God is leading you down a certain path, you need to go down that path. Be patient on the path. Don't procrastinate, but do it today. Amen. And trust that God will lead you to where you're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And whatever you get there, everything you need will be there. When the, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they were looking in the in the desert and no water, nowhere. Lord, hey, uh, Moses, you let us out here to die. Mm -hmm. But where is your faith? God provided manna and quail daily for them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Their daily bread. God will provide mm -hmm. if you trust Him. If you wait on Him, have patience for Him. He will be there and be right on time. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Brothers and sisters, we're about to have faith. You've got to have patience and not let your patience turn into procrastination. There's a fine line between the two, and the fine line is called faith. Don't put it off for tomorrow. If God is calling you to be a part of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. you need to join today. Wherever you are in this world, if you are not a part of the body of Christ, you need to come today. Man. And don't wait till you got this, or don't wait till you got that. Don't wait till this person can be there and that person can be there. Join God's house today. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord told me one time, if you wait for all your ends to be tied, God will never have an end to pull. Don't wait for all of your, your, your end. I'm going to get this together first. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to stop watching or talking to this person. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to stop drinking first. Then I'm going to go. You might not make it to that day. Amen? Stop worrying about all your loose ends. God will pull on those loose ends and straighten you out. You got to just come. Amen? You got to first believe. It says you got to first believe that he is. And when you believe that he is, then that produces a faith. And that faith will then help you with your patience to wait on God. And when he comes, he'll be right on time. And as I close, look at verse 11. It says, through faith also Sarah. Herself, she re received strength to conceive seed and was delivered a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. It says, Sarah, even though she was an older lady, she had patience. One day she's going to have that child. Now she's gotten way above childbearing age. And, and she, in, in her mind, is, in anybody else's mind, like, I'm too old to have some kids. Amen? Lord, tell you you're going to have a, a child and you 70, 80 years old. I'm way too old to bear children. But she had faith in who had promised her. See, it wasn't just some regular person off the street that told her that. It was God that promised her that. So she waited. And she probably went past these years and like, Lord, when, when I'm going to give birth? When am I going to be pregnant with, with this child that you're talking about? When is it going to happen? I'm, I'm 20. Now I'm 30. Now I'm 40. Now I'm not 70. What, what time will that happen, Lord? But 
But she kept on waiting, amen. She kept being patient amen. and waiting on God because she had faith that who is the promiser would deliver the promise. Amen. And then because she waited, she was able to conceive seed just as he had promised. So brothers and sisters, faith is the line between patience and procrastination. Don't let your procrastination lead you to the gates of hell. Don't let your procrastination put off God to tomorrow because tomorrow might not come for you. Amen? Amen. If it's in your heart to give yourself to God today, do it today. Get somewhere and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is required of all of us. Amen? Amen? And be the one that says, I will wait on the Lord. And don't be the one that says, I'll seek the Lord tomorrow when I'm ready. The doors of the church are open. Please stand as we open up God's house. For there may be one that come at any time. And it's not I that's calling, but it's God that's calling. Wherever you are in the world, <clears throat> under the sound of my voice, give God your hand today. It is not me that's asking, it's God that's calling. Yes. Don't wait on friends, amen? Amen. amen? Don't worry about how it might look and being shy. Yes. Don't wait on this and that. Don't, don't, don't put yourself off because God has promised you the world yes. if you just come today. Any of us, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. But through righteousness and faith and his grace, we all are a part of the body of Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> we will now prepare for Holy Communion. 